So in this uh, lecture we will discuss about the proton synchrotron. It is a class of proton synchrotron which is used for the espalachian neutron sources. So, so first of all when we are talking about the espalachian neutron source means this accelerator is used for getting the neutrons. So what are the other neutron sources? So very small scale neutron sources consists of some natural radioactive isotopes and some artificially created. Radioactive isotopes naturally was used by the other Ford in his experiment. Now for getting higher and higher flux, some artificially created uh, radioisotopes are used and mainly Californium 252 is used as a neutron source and it gives the 10 to 9 neutrons per second type of flux and this Californium is obtained through the nuclear reactors. Other small scale neutron sources are sealed tubes and some small accelerators. In this kind of uh, you can have 2.5 MeV proton from a very small LINAC and impinges those protons on the lithium target. So decent flux can be obtained using this kind of isot uh, neutron sources. A very large facility which can give a very large neutron flux is basically the fission reactor, nuclear reactor in which a uranium 235 or plutonium 239 are filled as the fuel and by capturing the neutron these emit the two or three neutrons as well as some fragments. So a nuclear reaction takes place and uh, schematically this is shown here. So this is the neutron, it impinges on the target, target may be the uranium 235 or plutonium 239 nucleus and after this reaction there are some fragments, some small nucleus can be created and neutrons are generated. So 2 to 3 neutrons are generated per reaction. So on an average we can say that 2.5 neutrons are generated in one nuclear reaction and out of these 2.5, one neutron is used for sustaining the chain reaction and you can say that 0.5 neutrons roughly lost in the absorption. So one neutron per fission is available to the user. The flux from these kind of reactors, neutron flux which we get is 10 raised to 15 per second or 10 raised to like that. This is the nuclear reaction which is shown here and on each nuclear fission we get roughly 200 MeV thermal energy. When a high particle impinges on a nucleus, the nucleus disintegrates in nucleons and light nuclear particles. So what is the expellation and how it is different from the fission we see now. This is a very very high energy particle. In case of fission, the energy of these particles are low. Either it is a thermal neutron or the fast neutron. In this case, it may be 1 GeV proton and it impinges on the target nucleus. Target nucleus may be a high Z material even it can be a uranium 238 and a large number of neutrons and protons are ejected through this nucleus and some light nuclei can be ejected as fragments and some other particles are also ejected. So the basic difference from the fission is that in fission large fragments are there. In this case a small fraction fragments are there and a large number of nucleons are ejected. So if a target is suitably built one GeV proton can eject 20 to 30 neutrons. So we can get a high flux of neutrons by this kind of sources. So how these sources are made using the accelerator we see now. First of all we have some proton sources then a linear accelerator which accelerates the protons up to highest energy or up to some desired energy level and then after acceleration these protons hits the target. There may be two kind of expellation source based on the accelerator. One is long pulse expellation neutron source and other one is the short pulse expellation neutron source. 
in long pulse expulsion of protons the protons hit the target directly from the linac while in the short pulse expulsion source after linac there is a ring this ring may be a synchrotron or an accumulator ring and after that these protons ejected from this uh, ring and then these protons hit the target so how these are different we see now from ion source of linac we can accelerate a long pulse of protons however the current is not so high we can say this is the number of protons this is not so high so short, a small current or low peak current but a longer pulse this pulse is has the pulse length of tp this may be 1 to 2 millisecond long this pulse can be accelerated very high peak current or high peak high pulse current cannot be obtained directly by the ion source or if it is available then it cannot be accelerated in the linac because at the low energy part there is a severe problem of space charge we will see again as this kind of problem a little bit in this lecture what is space charge problem already you might have learned about some space charge problem in the linac in your linear accelerator modules so very high current cannot be obtained at lower energies so a lower current and longer pulse is accelerated and then via multi turn injection scheme what is that scheme means suppose we have an accelerator in which these proton or uh, ions will be injected through a line you can say h negative ion or proton and now after injection these will revolve in the ring so say this is the t revolution is the revolution time now if t revolution is much much smaller than tp then how the pulse will be injected means pulse head will be injected first and it will keep revolving and it will make many revolutions until the tail will injected so in this fashion the complete pulse will be injected in many turns so if suppose t revolution is nearly tp by 1000 or 2000 means 1000 or 2000 turns injection will be there means head will be injected first and when tail will be injected the head will revolve around 1000 or 2000 turns so in this fashion finally the pro, uh, pulse of particles will be of only t revolution time means this pulse time has been reduced to t revolution but has become very intense so by multi turn injection scheme we can get a very short but high peak neutron pulses and when this high peak neutron pulses impinges on the target it generates a very high flux of neutrons so we can say that accelerator based expulsion neutron source are pulsed neutron source and it generates a very high peak flux of the neutrons while the reactor based system generates a continuous flux of neutrons so if a user wants very high peak flux of neutrons in the pulsed mode then accelerator based dispellation source is the choice and if user wants a continuous flux of neutrons high flux of neutrons then reactor is the choice it means reactor and dispellation sources are complementary to each other in case of the neutron sources now in case of synchrotron radiation sources the main goal was to increase the brightness of the emitted radiation means we want to lower down the beam emittance as much as possible means reducing the beam emittance was the goal for the accelerator designer here instead of emittance the main thing is the beam power as much as you can if we have higher beam power higher beam power means it will eject large number of neutrons from the target so we want to increase the yield of the neutrons from the target so we have to have very high beam power in the accelerators 
Now, how this high beam power can be achieved and what is the beam power actually, how it is defined, we see this. We know that if charged particles are passing through a point, it constitutes a current. So suppose n number of charged particles has passed in time t, then I average is n q1. So this is known as average beam current of an accelerator. That how many charge has been passed through a point in one second. This is the similar to the electrical current definition. Now if we multiply this average beam current with energy of the beam, here pay attention to the units. Energy should be in EV while current should be in the ampere. So we'll, we will get the average beam power in volt. Now how current and energy gives you power? We can see here that suppose there are n number of particles. So how much energy it contains? It contains n into E in joule. This energy is contained into the beam. If what is the current now or what is the power we want to calculate the power so this is the energy contained in the beam so if energy contained is divided by time that how much time is taking to cross these n particles at a point then it will give you the power now instead of joule if we convert this e joule into the electron volt we will get n q e electron volt upon t this n q t is the average beam current and this e e v is the energy so power becomes i average into e e v by a simple calculation we can see what is the required beam power in inspiration source let the required neutrons per second from source is 10 raised to 17. This is the flux of the neutron per second that is 10 raised to 17 neutrons per second. We want this is a typical number because from the reactor we get almost in the order of 10 raised to 14 to 15 neutrons per second. So in the peak flux we want one to two order more neutrons than the reactor. So we take a simple number of 10 to 17. Now consider a 1 GV proton. 1 GV proton when it impinges on the target and if target is well built then it can easily eject out 20 neutrons. So how many protons will be required for so many neutrons we calculate it 10 to 17 by 20. So number of protons required to generate 10 raised to 17 neutrons will be 10 raised to 17 upon 20 because one proton ejects 20 neutrons so number of protons will be 20 times less than the neutrons so this gives you 5 into 10 raised to 15 protons now what is the average current due to this number of protons so average number of current will be number of proton multiplied by the charge. Charge on the proton is 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 coulomb. And we have seen that if this proton, number of proton is for one second, then we have divided this number by one second to get the current. This gives you 800 micro ampere. Means an accelerator having one GV proton energy if it operates with 800 micro ampere of average beam current it can generate 10 to 17 neutrons per second with a suitably designed target so what is the power of beam just current this is 800 micro ampere so i have converted into the ampere so 800 into 10 to minus 6 
and 1 GV I have converted into the EV that is 1 into 10 is to 9 and it gives you 800 kilowatt. So 800 kilowatt of beam power is required to eject so many neutrons.